So I've always wanted to figure out exactly who is the best modded Civ in all of Civ 5. So I've picked 18 of the most subscribed and top rated of all time in the Steam Workshop to battle it out here in this AI only campaign. So I try to find the most balanced map so that everyone gets kind of a fair shot. Obviously there's so much that I can do, but I have included barbarians, ruins, as well as city-states. That way no one is, is getting gypped on whatever their unique ability, their unique units, their unique buildings, whatever it may be. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys probably do not remember or, or don't know any of these modded civilizations' uh, abilities. I've included in the description below though every single thing. All their unique units, unique buildings, unique abilities. I apologize for the, if, if you know, clicking that description more in the description button uh, sends your computer into the fifth dimension and you have to scroll for hours and hours to get, just to get the comment section but still I mean I still read it wrote it all out for you guys so that we're all up to date with exactly what everyone has and and, and how everyone's gonna do uh, again so just to kind of but now I, I I guess I've been doing these AL only battles for quite a long time and I think this should be a very interesting one because it is a random map as well as I've included another thing uh, I have included where we got mods and as you can see, I've got a bunch of mods on here, so I have used the Smarter AI, the Smart AI mod, and I'm hoping, now, obviously this mod can do only so much, but it should help out with some of the, you know, some of the, I don't know, lack of a brain some of these leaders have. This is, these are modded leaders, as well as I am playing on Immortal Difficulty Standard Speed, where we're playing on actually a smaller map, a tiny map, uh, to be just, I mean, exact, but uh, this, I think, is kind of the perfect size for those civilizations to get their, you know, third to fourth cities down, but still have early war. It's very important that we have early war. That way we're not jipping anybody out of, like, uh, some of their unique units very early on in the game. And that's kind of one of the problems with Civ Five is that uh, the people that have their bonuses early don't do as well just because the game skips so fast. So, yeah, we are playing on Immortal Difficulty, but as you can see, I've removed all the units. I've, I've removed any warriors, uh, archers, or workers. That way we start off on a... Uh, it, it's... I've done a few tests, and it seems to be the most exciting for several different reasons. Uh, and I'll just kind of let the campaigns show you uh, exactly how and and why. Um, as well as I've removed their technologies. I know that's a big deal for, you know, we we speed through the game way too fast. Like on something like Deity of Difficulty, uh, I, I'm, I've, I've only bumped it down to Immortal because... It doesn't give those super crazy bonuses on Deity. Like, it's unbelievable the bonuses that the AI gets on Deity. A um, Immortal seems like it's that perfect in-between sweet spot. Immortal Emperor. And I like Immortal a little bit more only because it causes for more early war. Now, as you can see, I like this map a lot because there is an opportunity to colonize if if, if some of the civs uh, get the chance to. And really, I mean, anyone can, can do it. Um, and again, so like in all my AI-only battles, of course, you can leave a comment in this, uh, in this section below here and, and let me know who you guys think will win and then by the end of this I will of course give you a shout out and uh, thank you so much just just put just one nation uh, just put the, the the nation's name and uh, and and then I'll, I'll find it and by the end of this campaign I'll give you a big old shout out with an intro and stuff like that so yeah in terms of my choice because I always like to pick my own choices here in these campaigns I've got to go with the papal state man those unique that that unique ability is amazing uh, I was ext extremely shocked here to see what the Pope is getting for his... It doesn't even... It, I mean, I'm not going to say it doesn't seem fair. It does. Uh, again, we are playing with... Oh, actually, I didn't mention this. We are playing with all of the victory types on. It seems only right. I can't... You know, I know that some people like for me to eliminate some of the victories. You know, I'm sure some of you some of you are like, you know, why didn't you go just domination only? I can't... If I'm, if I'm trying to achieve and trying to find exactly who the best modded Civ is, I can't go Domination only because that obviously gears only a few Civs, like Prussia, who is a big one. And I haven't even gone over some of the Civs that are in this game. But uh, So yeah, just really quickly, um, the Pope has... Tourism is increased by 50% with civilizations that share your religion. So depending on the religion, that's going to be a big deal. Uh, they can spend faith on disciplines, which can be used to create unique great works. Uh, and they begin with plus faith instead of a culture. So you can assume that they probably get a path on it up soon, as well as maybe a religion. Uh, they also have a temple, unique, bo uh, unique building, which is pretty much going to give them unique great work slots, as well as it's going to uh, allow them plus two faith for that city. And this and this building can be built three times in one city. Three times. 
Now that is pretty crazy, and then they also have a unique unit, but uh, that doesn't do much except for, except for, I will say, it does generate plus two tourism after radio. So if they decide to stay with outdated units, uh, for, I mean, I guess from the way I read this description here, if they decide to stay with their outdated units, that's going to provide them plus two tourism. For every single one of those. And we know how the unique, uh, I'm sorry, how the civilizations love in Civ 5 to spam their unique units. So that will be really, really interesting. I, my money is definitely on the Pope, but he's in a really sticky situation. So let me go ahead, and I haven't talked about all the nations in this game, because I know that a lot of you guys probably don't recognize them. So we have Afghanistan here. Oh, this is going to be really, really hard, because uh, there are no units for me to scroll over and see. Well, I'm going to try my best to uh, to remember, because even though, even, I, even myself, I'm not like perfect on this. Uh, we have the Philippines, the, uh, the, in, inudits, inudits, in, Inudits. They're like they're like these uh, Eskimo, this like Eskimo tribe here, and I really really like these civ, this civ here. Uh, but they need to get towards the uh, the Inuits. I'm sorry. Uh, they need to get more towards the snow, and, and that's where they really shine. Is that they want to get up to the like the snow and the tundra? But luckily they they have a few possible routes to get this way. But they they need to get off this Pangaea map before anything else. We have the Goths, Belgium, uh, Champa, the Champa uh, Kingdom. I'm not, I'm not, I'm apologize if I'm not saying that right. Uh, we, we, we talked about Prussia, we talked about, we have Australia, Iceland, Scotland, Bulgaria, Canada, Finland, Mali, Afghanistan, uh, the Papal States, Philippines, the Sioux, Hungary, and Vietnam. And uh, we'll get into their exact locations. I'm sure you guys are probably a little bit better at geography than I am because I can't, sometimes I can't recognize just by looking at the top of my head at, at their capital cities, uh, which civ they are. But uh, my bet, I think... That Prussia is going to be, obviously, you know, Prussia's unique ability and their unique units are really geared towards military, as we, you know, kind of historically know Prussia's a very big military um, nation. So, yeah, Prussia should be interesting, being so close to Finland. Finland's not very militaristic. Uh, Finland, Finland actually has one of the kind of, you maybe the weaker unique uh, abilities and unique units, but, I mean, it, it all depends. I, I, I mean, who knows? Um, we have Hungary here. Hungary's pretty good. Uh, I think that... But I think overall, we have Iceland. I, I do like Iceland. Canada, for all my Canadian brothers out there who have wanted to be in this game, I, I apologize it's taken so long, but uh, I'm sure you guys are going to do very, very well. I know that uh, for me, I think that three nations, I'm still going to be going with the Pope. I think the Pope has the best chance of winning, but three nations to look out for, uh, I, I think, is the Pope or the Papal State. I'm, I'm probably going to refer to him as the Pope a little bit uh, within this campaign. We've got Prussia as well as Canada. Now, Canada is a big one because with every friend they have, that's an extra vote, that's an extra delegate in the World Congress. So if they're super peaceful, they don't, you know, expand too much uh, military-wise, and if they get a bunch of friends up, they're going to control the World Congress. But then again, I got I to, gotta, they also give their friends one vote. But still, I mean, you have to think that they're probably, if they're friends with another nation, they're going to be kind of... Uh, obviously maybe gearing towards the same proposals they're going to both be kind of desiring the same proposals so i think that you should definitely watch out for canada maybe in the world congress who knows with the diplomatic victory a diplomatic victory it's it's possible i mean they can get up a lot of votes really really fast um so yeah i mean those are some of the civs i think to watch out for that's really kind of a uh, very, very important. We already talked about you now. Vietnam is a, is another good one. They're very good at defense, um, and, and 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 even though they're kind of in the middle here, they might have a, a really, really good opportunity of of staying alive. And and even though they're surrounded, they're they they, they they'd be okay, I think. Um, Bulgaria has all sorts of different. I mean, I think I'll I'll think I'll let you guys for the most part uh, check in the description exactly who you guys think. But um, but yeah, I mean, I I'm gonna what I'm gonna do for every intro. For every single intro we do, I'm going to go over at least one uh, of, of a Civ's unique abilities and unique units. It could just, just in case you don't like to read like me, if you can't read like me, I guess I should say, um, then I'll, I'll make sure that before every intro of a video, we'll talk about, or not, I guess after every intro of a video, we'll talk about some of the, uh, some of the, some of the powers, some of the bonuses that each one of these leaders have. Australia, I definitely have my eyes on. Australia has a really, really unique unique ability, I guess you could say, where uh, every city they found is actually a puppet. Um, yeah, I was I was very confused doing a couple of tests, but yeah, and those puppets are going to provide also extra tourism and culture, so that'll be interesting. Oh, Finland has the first Pathion, unless I missed another one. No, 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 of course Pope has, the, the Pope has one. Uh, we talked about how early he gets that extra faith, because he's, no, he's not getting culture, though. Um, the faith is... 
is replacing culture that normally, you know how you normally start off with plus one culture. Well, that, yeah, he might get a Pathion up first, but he's going to have a tough time getting policies. Maybe not a tough time, but he's got to get that monument out as soon as possible. One thing that I like about these smaller campaigns is that we can really keep up to date with all the relationships of all these nations. And the info is a lot more clear. Uh, we can, you know, watch out for alliances, watch for friendships. You know, with the, with the big AI-only world campaigns, it's just so hard to keep up with all the diplomatic, uh, you know, storylines and stuff like that you can't this is going to be very clear cut and i'm really 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 excited for uh kind of watching that now i know that i have a spy that i haven't really even done anything with yet i should probably do something i just wanted to kind of see who was going to take the lead obviously it's kind of it's kind of hard to make those assumptions we got a bunch of pathions being founded and canada was one of them uh as well as hungary a lot here on the eastern part of this pangea map really interesting Lots of uh, lots of Pathions on here. So me with the pointy of six, you could just go ahead and ignore me. Uh, so we have this is gonna suck because I I don't remember the leaders' names. Uh, I, I'm sure I will by a few of these videos, but I think this is the uh, the Champa Kingdom. I, I I we have I think this is Scotland. I know this is the Sioux, uh, the natives, the Sioux. Uh, we have Vietnam. As well as a few of these other. I mean, who's doing the worst? I mean, some people we know. Oh, wow, Prussia has nothing. Russia has exactly no units, and I thought that's why it's going to be exciting. Uh, that's why I, d I deleted kind of the starting bonuses for the Immortal difficulty. If I removed the technologies that they naturally get for this difficulty, as well as the units, then we should well we should slow down the game a little bit, but at the same time have it ramp up as soon as those huge bonuses uh, for the difficulty start to kind of come in. Obviously, um, there's there's like a I, I know that I, I think off the top of my head, Immortal difficulty shaves off a, a few of the turns for production uh it, it gives you extra happiness i think that i know that it gives you a crap load of things and usually that those bonuses don't come till like uh i mean those those bonuses come right away but they really make an impact later on in the game um that's when they really come forward so i guess uh since i i think let's go for i i'm, I'm thinking we need to definitely look at the papal state i think it's i think it's the best way to go now where is he uh, I gotta remember these. There we go. Let's see exactly what he's gonna do. Now, the Pope is gonna be really, really quiet. Uh, again, I, I talked about how he is between Belgium and, and Iceland. And Iceland actually has their first settler out, which is interesting. So does Prussia. Prussia's going for it fast. Uh, and again, these, these nations, if they want to get up a city, they've got to do it fast. We, they can only really maybe get two or three, maybe four if they're lucky. Um, so this, the, the nations that are going for settlers fast and, and, and early... Those, you can assume, are going to be doing pretty well. So like I said, yeah, I might be thinking the Pope could win a cultural victory. Uh, and again, I think a, a cultural victory as well as a diplomatic victory is more on the table because I did remove technologies. Uh, so even though we're playing on Immortal, uh, it's probably more likely that we could maybe get a cultural victory instead of a science victory, where science victory was just so obvious when you played on these higher, higher difficulties. It just came so fast. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case this time. But yeah, like I said, I mean, he's in, he's in a sticky situation, as well as he has Prussia and Hungary uh, even further down south, but they might be a really, really good ally for Rome. Um because Budapest is is not far from Iceland's capital, as well as we've got Prussia here, very close to uh, to to Brussels, to the Belgian uh, capital here. And good, there are some uh, there are more there are more units out, so now I can actually look at, and and find out where everyone's at. We knew this was Finland. How's Australia doing? Uh, and, and like I said, again, we're going to go over, if you don't know, if you don't want to read all the, the massive info and information in the description, I'm going to go over all their, you know, unique abilities and unique units by the end of this campaign. We're going to go by every single one. I am excited to see how the Sioux do. I really, really like this nation. I, this is one of my personal favorite, uh, mods. I, I think that they're very, it's a very cool, uh, native tribe. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to see exactly what they do. Now they're going to get a, they get a really interesting unique ability where they have bison that appear if they're, if they appear in the plains and then the bison will also move. They can't work the bison, um, but it does provide extra gold yields. So that's pretty cool. Uh, although we all know that, you know, gold yields, in this game, as well as some of the nations that get like extra, you know, points for golden ages. And I'm looking at you, Scotland, because that's one of the big bonuses that Scotland has. You know, those those abilities that give them extra, you know, like golden ages or or like, you know, extra money or, you know, we've all seen that the AI doesn't handle money very well. But I'm really fascinated to see 
how the smarter AI or the smart AI mod does to increase uh, some of the choices that the AIs make. I know that that's such a, you know, oh, I just want to bash my face into this computer sometimes because some of the, you know, the, the AI's decision making is just terrible. And I really, really am hoping that we're going to see something different here. Oh, Canada's got their settler out as well. So I see that Prussia and Iceland have their first, second cities down, or I guess their second cities. I don't know why I said they're first, second cities. Uh, maybe we should review over some of the city-states as well. That might be uh, some of the, like, uh, exactly what they could provide to some nations. Now, Almonte here uh, is going to provide, they're militaristic. Oh, now that's a good one. Uh, yeah, that, that's a really good one. And they also have a, uh, they're irritational and they have access to the resource of pearls. Uh, we also, we don't have Florence guys. I'm sorry. No, no God today. Uh, again, I figured I'd, I'd let someone else not get dominated by Florence this time around, but maybe next time. Militaristic also from the Congo. We knew about that. Uh, smart and, um, mercantilism, mercantilism. They have, they're mercantile, so they're going to provide extra happiness as well as who is the other one? Milan, cool, and Milan's cultured. So relatively spread out, no one's gonna be providing extra food, and that's, that's fine, I mean, I like that a lot of these city-states are gonna be providing more military, um, as well as don't forget that the city-states are playing on immortal difficulty as well. So, I mean, I'm just saying that it's not totally out of the question that they could take over some nations here. It's not totally out of the questions. Uh, the question, uh, can't wait to see exactly how the Goths do as well. They're very uh, military-focused. So it should be interesting, them being so close to both Bulgaria as well as uh, Vietnam. But Vietnam should be able to handle themselves. Like we said, Vietnam's a really, really good nation to defend themselves. Um, it's kind of like an Ethiopia-styled sieve, and I really, really, really like that. I mean, it's going to be really tough for anyone to take this over. Scotland's in also a pretty good defensive location. Uh, and they do have this awesome unit called the Highlanders that I can't wait to see. Uh, I mean, all these guys, I, there's a lot of, of, of unique units and unique buildings that I cannot wait to see some of these sieves start to build. Um, so what do we got here? So we have the Pope. I, I don't know why it's... Not, why isn't the Pope leading... Well, it is... Oh, never mind. I'm dumb. I was going to say, like, why isn't the Pope leading the Papal State? But, nope, nope. I'm, I'm dumb. I can't believe I even said that. Uh, so they're constructing the Great Library inside of Rome. And I, I don't know what side of this continent is going to... Well, I guess it's not really... I guess it's just a Pangea map, not really a continent, right? I guess it is a continent, technically. There's only one continent, though. Uh, there's, like, minor continents, but there's only really one continent. I wonder, I wonder what side here is going to get broken out into war first. Now, I know the AI does not appreciate early expansion, but because a lot of these guys don't already have units down, that should make it pretty interesting. It, it, it also should make it interesting because the military civs are going to be mil building military units before a lot of the other nations, whereas, you know, someone that's kind of relatively peaceful... Um, I like Canada, maybe they probably won't invest too heavily in their unique, uh, in their units. Uh, so I, it, it is going to be fascinating to see how the militaristic civs, uh, I guess, and their relationship with the more peaceful civs, like maybe Hungary and, and Canada, as well as Australia. I mean, those are all very peaceful nations. So uh, I can't wait to see how this campaign goes. Again, like I said, if you want to leave a comment section below telling me just one nation you think is going to win, there's, an, there's a 1 out of 18 chance. So it's pretty, it's not bad. Well, 1 out of 19, because you, you never know. You never know if uh, I can win, because uh, it is possible here as Venice with my one submarine, which is how I do the AI-only battles. That's how I... Uh, am able to watch these campaigns. But like I said, yeah, go ahead and leave a comment section. Uh, comment in the section below. Uh, let me know who you guys think it could win. There's lots of different possibilities. And if you guys like this series, please consider leaving a like. It makes a big, huge difference. And I thank you guys so much for it. I will forever love you. So thank you so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow.